hello everyone welcome uh, to our first workshop for photography uh, our workshop will be presented by uh, our friend that we miss him a lot uh, frank dizer uh, the workshop is for architects engineers interior designers planners and construction people uh, what i'm trying to ask from you is to keep quiet during the presentation of frank if anyone has any uh, comments or need any clarification, you just put your comments on the chat or raise your hand and we will give you the presentation, the, the right to speak just after the presentation. So uh, we are impatient to give the mic to, to Frank. And yes, we can start just uh, a, a hint. Uh, sorry for the late, we were a bit late for as it's our first time. And Yalla, Frank, the floor is yours. Oh, so I have the stage. Hi, good evening, everyone. I'm Frank. I'm um, I'm an architect. Surprisingly, yay. Okay, literally came back from a project earlier and uh, don't even have time to breathe. Uh, but yeah, uh, we're conducting this uh, photo class um, for architects engineers, designers, planners, and construction people in general, uh, which means if you have um, a, a camera like what I have, you can join me or join us um, in looking at your camera while we're doing the discussion. Uh, but before that, um, I need to discuss with you guys um, uh, a little bit of history and background of photography, all right? Uh, for any reason that you want to interrupt uh, or raise a question, just raise your hand on the, on the platform and then uh, I will get back to you uh, or answer you as soon as I can. Okay, so um, photography was um, way, way back in the 1800s. Uh, I'm sharing the, um, the slide now with you guys where you have the very, very first photo that was taken, the very first shot that was taken in the 1800s. And uh, if you imagine, if you have your own phone now and you just you know, open the camera app and then um, just snap the shot and then you got it. But would you imagine that in the, in, the, in the early days of photography, this photo that you're seeing was snapped for eight hours. That's how long it takes for a photo to be taken in the previous days because they have all those chemicals that are going around they're not using film, they were using just glass and you know, it was in the early primitive days of photography. So this was, this was taken for eight hours and it was photographed outside the window of a photographer. Um, and um, I'd like you guys to thank uh, uh, Joseph Neeps, he's a French guy. And pretty soon you will see some other names later um, um, for gifting us um, the invention of photography. Before photography, you have people in front of a painter, you know, like those that you see on movies, that they're being painted literally by painters and the subject will stand for a few hours, probably even more, just to get their, you know, the first shot, the first shading, and then they'll sit again. So it revolutionized everything, photography, since the 1840s. And then, um, you know, as time progressed, um, we go to these photographers already. So I think these were um, already in, um, in the early 1900s to late 1800s, um, where they have this huge, gigantic, uh, uh, we say now tripod. Um, I don't know the technical term that they used before, but they were putting up, especially the, the, the photos on the right side of the slide, where they need the entire platform to photograph a train. So that's, that's how, how they set up their own studio, quote unquote. And imagine that they need to uh, travel with their uh, caravan because they're using dark rooms. And I know you, most of you guys know what dark rooms are um, to, to process all those negatives. All right, so that's how photography started. Um, technically, I have used film 
was in the early 80s and 90s. I still remember the smell of um, the developers and the fixers in my hands. Um, and it's so unpleasant, but it's so reminiscing of how we used to photograph films, uh, photograph people with films before. Uh, moving on, uh, we have we have another um, iter a slide for the iterations of the cameras that we have. So, you know, those are cardion bellows that you see on cameras, uh, on, on, on the instruments, they're also used in the cameras. So we call them bellows and it's used to like make the camera as dark as possible. So only one of the element of the camera can let in light because at the other end of this camera, you have the, uh, an exposure where um, film or other materials will be exposed to the light. That's technically how a camera works. So that's the evolution from, from the field cameras to I'm sure some of you know about brownie boxes. Those were launched in the 1930s until you have those um, TLRs, you know, twin lens reflex cameras. And uh, some of you already know those ones that you photograph from the waist level. And I know most of you know already about Hasselblad's um, cameras before. Uh, those are medium format cameras until we have the DSLRs that we have today and um, mirrorless cameras right now, right? So from there until now, we have all of these. I also want to touch on how uh, they used to uh, expose or make images for these cameras. And uh, most of you know these ones um, that we have. So. Uh, especially the middle one with the 400px that's the most popular one for your um 135 we call them 135 because um it's 35 millimeter um cameras of um diagonal size of the film negatives and then you have the the larger formats of the camera so we have the 110 or some even know um james bond films where they put in the micro slides you know and i know you guys know about that but it takes a specific equipment uh, camera to do all of the things that you've seen in the um, in the Hollywood films, right? So from those microfilms all the way to the largest formats of the cameras, where you see um, the, the, these um, specific sizes on the screen right now are from um, the mil um, from the 35 millimeter. They did not include the 110, the medium format, and the large format cameras. And the large format cameras they used to have sheet films. And when we say sheet films, these are just like your um, bond paper, you know, your, your printing printing paper stuff that they used to slide in at the end of the camera. I'm uh, pausing for a little bit because um, some of you might uh, have your own cameras. I just want to, by uh, raising or even showing on camera, who among you guys have your own specific um, mirrorless cameras that you use or just there at their cabinet um, gathering dust. So I would love to ask you if you can bring them out and um, share along with me how and, and feel it and uh, look at it because later we'll be doing a small demo kind of of how you how you can differentiate uh, the DSLRs um, the bodies and the lenses and all the knobs and buttons because it seems to be so trivial to most people how these buttons operate. All right. I would love to, but as a show of hand or as a show of um, like in chat boxes, if you if you have some some cameras with you that you can say, hi, I have my camera with me or, you know, hi, I have my DSLR with me. So you can bring them out and practice um, with us because the next slide would tackle mostly on um, the parts of the cameras, which is very specific, DSLRs for that matter. Okay, so um, anyone with cameras with you? None. All right, moving on to the next uh, slide. So we tackled, uh, from the early days where you have the sheet films all the way to the DSLR for this matter, it's just SLR, it's not yet digital, but they have the same, they just eliminated the film. Unless I gift you a camera, who knows? <laughs> so uh, it's, it's very trivial and 
you know, and difficult for people to understand how buttons on the cameras operate. Number one, you just have to like, at least expose yourself two to three times a week, photographing something, whatever it is, um, inside your apartment, outside in your garden, bring it out to like when you go to Corniche or when you photograph uh, the cool buildings that we have here, probably Big Archie, um, just don't get caught off by, by guards because most some of the places that we have here are a little bit uh, sensitive to all of these when you bring cameras like these um in in such places but at least practice so you would know which which is which is the button which are the buttons for all of these stuff all right so moving on uh since that has i don't already have a dslr i sold everything out why because i love mirrorless cameras they're smaller lighter cheaper have better quality in general as long as you have the correct lens but uh, it serves the same purpose and i can fit in smaller cameras into some bags like these when I can fit in a, two more bodies of uh, or some more lenses you know so I love smaller cameras because they deserve the they serve their own um, uh, purpose while you're out there not very intrusive anyway so regardless of the size of the camera that you have whether DSLR or uh, mirrorless cameras they have the same two major parts. Okay, one is your lens, and this can be changed into something. And most people coin the term now ILC, which means which means um, interchangeable lens cameras, regardless of it, if they are DSLR or they are mirrorless. So they're they changed the term to have a general thing about ILC or um, whether DSLR or mirrorless camera. So, but the basic thing that you must know is you can change the lenses on your mirrorless camera. So you just have to put a but push a button wherever it is that you have, push a button so it will release the lever. That's the basic thing that you need to know. So you don't need to change your, your, your camera if you're not really that, I'm sorry, the lens on the camera, if you're really, really not that um, confident in doing it, perhaps you might, um encounter uh, a click or something that you're not supposed to do and you got you you panicked and you know you might break something out it's fine as long as you don't have you, i don't enjoy you to do this because it takes a couple of times for you to practice it's just like any other else okay so you have the lens and you have the body that's what you need to know aside from that um uh, make sure and this is the next slide so you have tons of lenses right I have a lot of lenses that I can show you guys. So this is another lens that I use and we will tackle this later. Uh, 12 millimeter ultra wide lens. This is a 50 millimeter uh, focal length. It's like the normal that we can see with our eyes. And I have some others, uh, but they're stuck on uh, another uh, camera. Okay, so imagine um, for architecture, interior, and the landscape photographies, they're one and the same. You need the um, lenses to the serve the same purpose. A food photographer will need will have the same camera. A filmmaker will have the same camera. A, a sports photographer will have the same camera body, but they have different lenses. This is what you need to do um, if you want to progress on your photography. Um, in the future, uh, whether for your client, whether for your own project, whether as uh, an enjoyment of architecture and tier design, um, you must have at least something as wide as um, uh, below 20 millimeters. Okay. Why are we talking about millimeters here? Okay. I did mention earlier about uh, the film format. If you go back to a couple of screens earlier, this format and you say uh, this yellow format here is 35 millimeter. They're, they're, they're different from the lens uh, millimeter designation. This is the actual size, all right, of the film where, where they have actually uh, uh, not copied, they, they progressed on with 35 millimeters. So your sensors on the cameras now are whether APS-C prop or you know, we're getting too technical, but this is what's supposed to be. Um, 
see the sensors here, that's a crop sensor and that's smaller than the 35 millimeter format camera. So we are talking about the digital um, um, format and this is the, the, the one on the screen is the film format. So it transposed to digital, okay? So this is what's also behind the, the sensor on your mobile phone, albeit super small, like probably less than one tenth of this one. That explains why when people say, oh, your camera is too bad because you took a bad photo of me during nighttime or whatever, it has something to do with um, the size of the sensor of the screen of your camera. All right. So going back to the lens requirements, uh, a couple of slides after. All right. So there are tons of lenses that are available, but specifically for architecture and um, interior and landscape photographers, they want something ultra wide or at least wide angle. Okay, so our baseline is 50 millimeters. Our eyes, well, technically not really. It's around 56 millimeters, okay? But they rounded it off to 50. So um, most people have a 50 millimeter uh, packaged with their cameras and they have probably an 18 to 55 or 16 to 50, whatever it is that they have on their cameras. I'm sure, and those who have their own digital cameras have um, 16 to 20 to 24 millimeters. That's good for interior photography, good for architectural photography, and good for landscape photography. And that's great. Uh, you just have to like practice a couple of days a week, perhaps three times a week, go out uh, during sunset, during sunrise, and and capture it. Okay. So, however, there's there's a caveat on that. If you want to uh, progress into taking, being more technical into doing architectural and uh, interior photography, you must learn all of these numbers. And we will touch that on perhaps another um, session, but this is, since this is the first one, it will be the introduction for all of those um, things that we need to talk about on architectural photography. Good thing I have, um, um, okay, so we, we talked about a 50 millimeter, uh, as the standard, right? Our eyes see 50 millimeters. Our eyes and the 50 millimeter lens represent how we view things as human beings. So whatever it is that you see, ask yourself, it's 50 millimeters. Like that's how, that's how the 50 millimeter lens capture everything. Going below 50 millimeters is wide until around 20 or 24 millimeters. And below that will be ultra wide millimeters, um, ultra wide lenses. So. Uh, these are numbers that you can see on the camera, and it's uh, giving a hard time. These are numbers. It will be the same, but some some lenses will be will have a different placement for all of these. All right. Uh, if you see the the numbers here, it designates uh, the iris or the exposure uh, aperture. Okay. This will be more technical and uh, will be tackled in detail on perhaps this. The following structure. This is a clickless. Um, we say it's clickless because um, it's uh, it doesn't have any clicks. Let me show you guys um, an older lens. If you can give me a second, I'm just getting it on my cabinet. An older lens that was manufactured in the, um, like around 30 years ago, and I believe some of you will appreciate that. Let me let me get it because uh, it's on my cabinet. Give me a second. Okay, so I'm back. All right, so lenses. So we have these numbers, all right? This is your iris or aperture, it's super technical for lots of people. And this is your focus. This lens is not an auto lens. It doesn't focus, it doesn't do auto iris. Everything must be done by the operator or the cameraman himself or herself. Okay, so with this guy, I know you know these uh, lenses before, uh, this was manufactured in the 70s. I'm still using them. Okay, this is mostly used for um, for my food photography. This is a macro lens. So you have um, uh, a click. So here, it's, it's, it has a sound of click, 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 click. And uh, it's, this is not good for video, but good for photography, for, for photography. And I have the same thing. This was, I think, probably manufactured in the 80s. Uh, I have the same, it's not clicking. 
uh, it's clicking. Yeah, you can hear the click, but the focus is, is still smooth and dampened, right? So um, why am I telling this to you guys? Because I have to open your eyes on how the possibility of photography is if you put yourself um, out there and do your practice. Um, whether on the job site, whether on, on your office, as long as you bring uh, or bring or focus or go to the wider end of your zoom lens, because most cameras right now that you are buying have um, um, packaged with them a lens kit. And you can see a lot of these on, on Amazon and bhphoto.com. You can see that when you purchase, like say, for example, a Canon R3 or a Sony Alpha 6500 or 6600, they come with kit lens. Most of them, most of the manufacturers sell them with kit lenses. And it's great for you to buy something like that if you go on and, and want to practice your photography. You know, but, but, and if you want to do like great photo shots, you have to come up with at least um, an 18 millimeters. This is a, uh, a 12 millimeter lens. See the bulb, the bulbous, um, how the, the, the cone, you know, the um, convex, yeah, it's the convex shape of the outer uh, lens. Um, this is so that you can capture a lot of details on, on, your, on your frame. You know, if you're photographing interiors, you need as ultra, as ultra wide as possible, especially in some of those projects that you have. Like if you're only doing interior projects for a restaurant or or interior project for, for um, you know, a two bedroom apartment. You know, that's why people are saying to me, hey, Frank, why do, why can't I capture the same field of view as you have? Because you're not using the correct or, you know, an ultra wide lens, you're just photographing on perhaps a 50 millimeter or something like that. So go lower, the lower the number, the better and more expensive it is. There's a caveat that that's, that's why I mentioned this earlier is that most people now are using their phones to photograph interior. And we're going to that next slide, all right? So um, right now, as we speak, um, mobile phones, whether Android or Apple, they have ultra wide lenses on their phones right now if you get the top end, and that's great. The only thing that you would, um, try to remember in photo and in, in using of this maximize it is that number one you must have great light all right don't photograph because as i've told you um if we go back again to the sensor size or the film size that we have in our cameras see the sensor size you know our phones have smaller than this so don't photograph in dim or lower light for architecture um it will show grain a lot but uh, the thing is that you just have to think that your main source of light must be always behind you, like the sun. So like give you a lot of light for your photographing. Okay, that's number one. So use your phone's ultra wide angle. Okay, use your phone's ultra wide angle in your projects. Um, for those who don't want to bother themselves to like buy a camera because okay, A number one, my salary was reduced, must cut whatever it is, and I don't have much camera, or they don't have the money to hire a photographer like me, they'd rather photograph on their phones. That's true. But you have to know that certain angles and certain, certain techniques when we're photographing um, your projects, you must have um, uh, those specific things, okay? Let's go and skip to the to the to this slide because I want you guys to have these tools and techniques. Okay. Since since if you guys already have your own camera, you can see ILC lens, interchangeable lens cameras. Okay, so you can change. Now this is an ultra wide camera. It can photograph already a um, a good amount of and I just snapped a good amount of uh, detail, ultra wide. This is just like around 15 centimeters from the, from the main camera of where I'm looking at in my iMac and it photographed the entire screen. So imagine how an ultra wide angle like this for your phone would, would be beneficial for your own project, okay? We have to train you to like use your eyes as an ultra wide lens too. 
All right. So number one is ultra wide and or tilt, tilt shift lens. Tilt shift is another fancy way of saying, hey, I can do this one on, on the actual photography, on the actual production or photography, and I'm not gonna get bothered by doing it in post. Because if you're doing, um, and I know you know these guys about how you photograph from, from down on eye level, and it's a tall building and the building's like leaning backwards. Tilt shift lens avoids this, and it's so expensive that I don't even have one with me. It's so expensive, uh, like what, 10 times the cost of my lenses. So I'd rather do it in Photoshop. It's me talking practical, practicality. All right, so ultra wide, you must train your eyes to have an ultra wide field of view. So whenever I go to a set or a, or a project or, or, or a, um, a restaurant or a building, I would say, hmm, all right, these are the elements, these are the elements, these are the elements. Sometimes I need an ultra wide lens, most of the times, by the way, but sometimes I also need a 50 millimeter lens to just photograph on the actual uh, subject. I mean, uh, being looking at the macro, the details, you know, but it depends really on how the client wants it or how the project reveals itself to you. Um, so number one is train your eyes or at least look ultra wide, like probably what, 170 degrees field of view from your left to your right, from your left to your right. Yes. So look at that, look at it that way. Okay, number two, tripod is your best friend. And I have a tripod with me. This is a heavy uh, 20 year old tripod already with me. Uh, there, there are so many things that are coming out right now. This is your best friend. Uh, we will tackle some more technical things about all of these stuff later. But yeah, this is a bald head and you can do wonderful projects with all of these things, tripods and thinking about wide angle lens. Okay, one, one thing about using tripod is that it keeps everything in level. That's the most important thing. When I started doing photography for interior projects, I tend to, I tend to angle my camera down or angle my camera up. Depends on how, the, how I see the project. Artistically, yes. But for real estate projects, for me as a photographer, um, I'd rather correct my, let my um, verticals remain verticals and my horizontals remain horizontals. That's a very important thing for you to remember too. Aside from using a tripod, especially now if you're using your mobile phone to photograph, you must have, you must have a basis where you know, all of those vertical lines must remain vertical, okay? Um, that would come where I think I think we skipped to number four, always photograph showing foreground, all right. Anyway, um, that would be beneficial to like, aside from showing more foreground, keep your verticals verticals and your horizontals horizontals. Okay, don't angle it like this, don't angle it, don't skew it, because you'll have a hard time, especially in projects where you guys are, are in. Um, as, long, as soon as you flip out your phone, don't do like this or do like that. If it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to photograph in detail, keep your phones or your cameras as flat and as level to the horizon as possible. It would even help if you have like the rule of thirds and we'll tackle that in, some, in, in the next one. But rule of thirds would be great. And I think in cameras, you have that in your mobile phone cameras. Okay, I'm talking about mostly photography here. So let's jump to number three, um, using ND or polarizing filters. This would be most especially beneficial for people who are progressing using cameras. And uh, for technical people, uh, for creative people, ND is neutral density. So there are, um, so when you photograph, see the, see the background here on the, um, on the um, on the screen, all right. If the sun give the sun a little bit more time, like thirty minutes more, and it rises a little bit more above the horizon of, of our of our background on the slide, it will just dominate everything. So what a good landscape or architectural photographers do is that they have an ND, and not only an ND filter, but a graduated ND, which means you know just like your graduate, it's darker at the top and lighter at the bottom, which means it's blocking more of the light coming from the sun on the, above the horizon and you know below the horizon is keeping it clear, which means you can even out the exposure levels of the 
of the sun or above the horizon and the, um, the buildings below the horizon. It's a little bit technical, all right? But it's very important, especially if you want to so if you want to show um, like uh, the ones that you do on your renders. Um, and people are like asking me, like, hey, our renders are good, and you know, um, can you do something like this? I mean, in real life, it doesn't work that way. It's very different, you know. So, so, uh, and people assume that uh, that when you're carrying a camera, you can do everything. It doesn't work that way too. Okay. So me, I have to uh, like educate customers to like say, hey, this is what I can deliver. Um, your project is not as good as this, but you know, we can do something like that in your render. But it's really not that way. That how you want it, you envision it. In reality, it's very different. Okay. All right. So that's enough for uh, ND or neutral density or polarizing filters. Okay. And we go to number four always photograph showing mostly foreground, especially on ultra wide angles, your iPhone 13s and 12s and your Samsung 21s and 22s. Um, since you have that ultra wide angle, sometimes the foreground is so empty move a little bit farther or find something that you can place in front of that to like show that um, you have something in front of it. Like um, this one on uh, the left that I photographed for uh, Gold Bay Properties, they own Marina Twin Towers. I have, I have an element here in, uh, in front to the right and I have an element here in front towards the left, which means it gives a, it gives a scale, like, like how, how big it is, how big the, the, the atrium is on this level. So going back to that slide earlier, always photograph showing foreground, um, this qualifies into something like that. See even the shadow on this part, it, it, would, it definitely helped it. But if there's no shadow or you don't have this column here and it doesn't have that column, it will not show the scale nor the nor the um, uh, the intention of you showing how huge or you know how good the actual uh, project is. All right. Number five, and this is very trivial and very difficult to do. Uh, use the magic hours. Uh, I'm not a morning person. It's very, really very difficult for me to wake up in the morning, but I can wait for the golden hour. And the golden hour is, they say golden hour, but it's only like 10 to 15 minutes before the sun touches the horizon. Like right now, um, it's really very, uh, uh, the sunset is really very fast. It, it's, it's fast that uh, you're, you're caught off guard. Um, especially if you want to photograph your building in that golden light, you know, uh, basking in that golden light, it will really, be, so you have to, some, some photographers who are doing this like 100% of the times, they have um, an application on their phones where they have um, calculate the sunrise and the sunset and all those locations, um, whether, whether they are, wherever they are in the world. And so they can plan all of these things. But, but for me, I'm moving dynamically. Sometimes I'm here, sometimes I'm there. So I just have to guesstimate. And I use the golden hour. It's usually only 10 or around 15 minutes that you have the window to set up, find your correct uh, angle and snap the correct picture for your own project. But believe me, if you get it on that particular time of the hour, it would be so great that you have the building in your warm golden light and, and it gives an, a, an aura of, of, um, of massiveness, you know, that, that kind of thing. So don't photograph during like around what, um, uh, nine o'clock. It's really very difficult for people, but, but for like some good, fo good photos that you want to like post on your walls and all that stuff, I'd rather ad ad advise you guys to go photograph from uh, perhaps seven to eight in the morning or around three to around 3.30 to around 4.30 in the afternoon until five o'clock. Uh, if you really need to like photograph um, your photos from around 10 until three, it will just be too harsh and, and people will say, oh, how, why does it, it look good? And you know, all that, thing, all that thing, you will come to know that when you, when you spend more time behind the camera. But really a good photog photography, photographer or a good photo from a building or a project would really, really make and show its own uh, color and, and grandiosity if you photograph from when the sun is near the horizon. 
That's why I'm, I'm, I used, I, I put here magic hours, golden hour and blue hour, which is like 15 to 30 minutes after the sun has dipped below the horizon, which means you have the city lights going and you know, all that stuff. It will be, even me, I'm, I'm, I don't do blue hours. I don't want to like bring out tripods, but try, try, try with your own projects. But most of the times I photograph before the sun sets. All right, um, number five. I'm sorry, number six, um, learn how to do HDR. Okay, uh, uh, we're talking about technical things here. HDR, uh, your phone is technically doing its HDR thing. Computational photography, what's they're uh, talking about right now in terms of uh, mobile phone photography. So I think uh, automatically when you snap something in your phone, you just touch focus and touch exposure, the phone does its thing. But for people who want to progress on doing photography manually, the way it was supposed to be, in the first days of digital things, HDR, which means high dynamic range. You have to take an exposure plus or minus the correct exposure, and then another one plus or minus um, the exposure. It's like a three exposure system stacking. It's so technical, but at least if, if you know how to learn HDR, oh my God, your 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 eyes will be like awakened. My mind, my, my eyes were awakened because I used HDR since just what, this year only or last year? And, and it blew me away because I was like photographing the, the not the HDR way, which is good. Uh, the clients already love it. But when, when, when you're like, hey, Frank, I want to show the sky and I want to show the interior of the room. And, but what my phone can do it. Uh, that's, that's how they do it. Uh, manually HDR. Phones can do it automatically. Cameras, you have to do it manually. All right. Of course, numbers, uh, number uh, seven, go, go out there and shoot. Uh, like before, um, before right, right now, I was outside photographing and the filming um, uh, a chef uh, doing some vegan things. What I'm trying to say here is that um, just go out there and shoot, regardless of whatever it is that they say to you or, or your, your work is. Uh, if you're already there on the site, spend at least another 15 to 20 minutes photographing things that you want to like photograph practice because you already have your phone with you and your camera with you why spend you know uh, a little bit more time to like hone your skills in terms of photography for more of the details of this then we have to do the more technical dive in things on the next session all right if you have questions number eight use the power of internet everything can be found in, on online now I used to say to my kids, they're eight and 12, like say, hey, you know what? Library now is like um, passe or out of the question because no, most people now just tap and you know look for that. So use the power of internet to like ask questions, go to forums, watch YouTube videos. For me, I used, I used to watch YouTube videos and it's great. And it teaches me a lot of things, but you have to go out and practice what you have seen on video right so once you have seen it go out there photograph and go back that's how you learn even in architecture you have to go out there and measure you know those kinds of things and come back and find out that your you know your project is like five millimeters off or five centimeters off or that kind of thing so it, it rearranges your mind into doing something into saying that oh i should have done something better so go out there and shoot but use the power of internet um and if you don't have anyone to like, you know, there are some more things that are obscure that you can't find on the internet, perhaps especially locally. Like when people say, hey, Frank, does this particular uh, building have security? I want to photograph. Of course, the internet cannot answer that. So you have to find a, a, an expert locally to like advise you on if it's like okay to shoot or, you know, uh, you have this good element there, like in Katara, if it's like okay to shoot in the blue hour or whatever, find an expert to answer your question and always say yes that's number 10 when i think it, it goes all the way even to construction people that when they have a client they will say hey can you do building for me and the, the contractor will just say yeah, i can do that without even saying no so you always say yes now i have some two slides here as a uh, most of the recent projects that I have photographed, this you already saw. So this I'm using um, ultra wide lenses. I think I did, yeah. And on the building on the right, I did an HDR. So if you see a high dynamic range, it equalized the dark and the light spots. That's how, that's how HDR works. 
All right, so I'm photographing this for Gold Bay and Gold Bay is the lead, uh, uh, is, is the company of Sheikh Al-Mansur uh, Jabra Thani and they have all of these uh, wonderful buildings up in Lucille. Um, and this one too. So you have an interior and uh, a building there. So uh, the right, uh, the, the photo on the right is a prime example of, I think I straightened this building up a little bit, not that much. So on Photoshop, um, the, remember I told you about tilt shift lens earlier, uh, that's expensive. I don't want to buy something like that. So in Photoshop, you can stretch out the perspectives. You just have to even practice your, your mind. It's a lot of thing to think about. Like, do I do HDR? See, the sun, sun is behind us. You're not supposed to photograph something like this, but I need to show the clouds and the buildings and the sunset. So this one is an HDR content. Plus, uh, I think I stretched out the building a lot to sort of show a perspective kind of thing. Um, same goes in the interior. This is an HDR content too. Um, so I, I equalize the, the dark and the light exposures. It's a lot of thing to think about. It's a lot of thing to like um, process in, in, in less than an hour of sitting, but these things will get your mind uh, going uh, and, and say, hey, I can do something like this with my phone. You just have to like practice it, right? And, and do it and let others critique your work even. And this is not just, I got, I got my, my works critiqued by my kids. So they're, they're the most, they're the most um, unassuming, very honest criti uh, critics out there, especially your kids. And um, they're, they're, they, they say it in front of your face, no questions about it, right? Um, so yeah, I hope I delved into some of these things. I've spoken for a long time uh, from the history of photography, all the way to the camera parts and lenses, you know, um, the film formats, all the way to uh, the parts of the camera. We did not delve deeper, but we can do it. You know, the lenses, um, your phones right now who can do better at, at photography, better than your cameras until to, until to the tips and tricks and features that you need to put your photography game up as a construction engineer, um, architect, construction person. Any questions? None of the questions. Too many. Can you hear me? Frank, can you hear me? Frank, can you hear me? I can hear you. I can hear you. I can hear you. Okay, 100 questions. Yes, please. Okay. Uh, uh, first, let's uh, set the second uh, uh, class. When will it be? And uh, what is the requirement? Whether we need to bring all, uh, all of us our cameras or uh, like today? With oh, that's cameras. an interesting question. I think we can, we can do a face-to-face. -face, uh -huh. So it's much better. I can okay. tell you which which lenses are best or which settings on your cameras because there are lots of settings here in your cameras that you can't understand. Uh, what is PASM? Is, does the P means professional on your camera? We can do that. Um, I'm open as long as you guys have uh, set up a time. Uh, let me know uh, at least a week in advance. <laughs> we'll, we'll arrange it. Yeah, we'll we can, arrange we, it's much better face to face. Uh, so I can like, hey, this is what, uh, yeah. Good. And thank you for the lecture. Thank you for your time. Uh, thank you for no the whole brief. Um, I got you guys. And now it's open. Now the question, and now it's open for the questions. Whoever wants to ask. Or I'll do it the way I do it when we uh, give a lecture. I go one by one. Yalla Slim. You I think you can do one by question. one. <laughs> <laughs> Yalla Slim. You can do one by one. Your, your question, Slim. Uh, first of all, I'm, I'm always uh, happy to have Frank with, Frank with us. Thanks Good. for for the presentation, Frank, and that's all. Okay, then we have uh, Samar, Samar Abdelghani. Fadli Samar. You are there, Samar. Ask any question. Samar is a civil engineer. Hi, Samar. Ah. 
he's not responding. Okay, we will go for Lakshmi. Uh, Lakshmi uh, it's hard for me to pronounce it. Lakshmi Narayana. Okay, Laksh okay, yeah, Mr. Lakshmi Narayana, go ahead. It's your turn. Your question. Yella, join us, please. No? Okay, Ahmed Qurashi. Your question, Ahmed. No. Ahmed. Omaima. Omaima, where are you? Omaima is not there also. Okay, Dalal. Dalal, she is an architect. I will know I know the architect yeah. hi, hi. from a family yeah. consultant office. <laughs> Go ahead, tell us. Look, uh, I agree with uh, Frank. I will bring my camera and the uh, lenses, and one time I will sit with him because otherwise I cannot understand uh, lo and long dist distance. You need a hands on, you need hands on. Yeah, yeah, that's why. That's why I will bring my camera. Actually, I have. Uh, uh, um, um, professional camera, so I will bring it with the lenses, so you can explain <laughs> better. Sure. Uh, whoa, I'm scared. Okay. Professional camera. My my cameras are not professional. Look how tiny they are. <laughs> uh -huh. yeah, no, no, no. It's, it's the same, same like that. I mean, it's not I uh, uh, telephone uh, camera, not iPhone. Okay, yeah. that's great. That's great. We'd rather yeah. have that. Uh, have you guys uh, at least uh, photographed in, say, for example, where your site visits, you know, and since you have your own uh, camera, Dalal, like, uh, like, oh, can I take a photo of this? And, you know, like for site inspection purposes, you know, or, or verification on the office. So like, hey, you know, this is not the way it's supposed to be. The material is different. Even the colors will be different. So uh, when we sit down and say, hey, uh, why is my camera showing blue instead of like yellow? So we also touch on that. I haven't even mentioned here white balance, which is really, really very tricky. Um, so yeah, you're correct. Uh, you have to at least mm, not master, but know your equipment. It's just like um, AutoCAD. You know, if you learn how to do AutoCAD this and AutoCAD that, it's just like even you're sleeping. You can do a line from here to there and type those all, all kinds of things. You know, the way the way you you you, you uh, how do you say this? Uh, use your equipment, especially about uh, like tools like these, would help you a lot, especially in in, in presenting. Because cameras, remember, cameras have a higher, have a bigger sensor. Use use to your advantage this one, and your phone sensor is practically only one tenth, even one fifteenth of this one. So it gives you a lot of detail. Uh, if you zoom in, say, for example, you were like, hey, I'm there. I cannot reach like 15, 15 meters away. And you have a camera and like photograph it. That's how cameras work. And if you photograph it the same on your phone, it's, if it's like low resolution, it will come. Oh, it's not good. It's not clear. And that's where arguments start. It's a tool, you know, so that's a great one. We can we can sit down one time, uh, do a hands on. I, we can do even like eight people, you know, have their own cameras. It's very, very difficult to have like 15 asking the same, asking different questions at the same time. And it'll take a lot of time. So probably let's limit to around eight or something. People who have their own cameras um, and have that hands on. You always have the sun on your back. Yes. Or you use a flash. Okay. Uh, Remember uh, this photo, mm -hmm. all right? The sun, the sun is directly in front of the camera. Okay. Okay. It's not supposed to be that way, but it must be that way on some times because I want to show the sunset, the beach, and the building. However, okay. for people who are starting to photograph, it's better for them to have the sun at the back. So the, it's a huge source of light to like photograph their own, you know, buildings. This one. On the right side, the sun is towards my right, but you know, uh, it's um, how do you say this? It's like around 2 p.m. So the sun is towards where I, where my head is. So you can you can barely see uh, the sun from the other side. So it's much better to avoid, of course, hot spots 
you know, especially with the shadows falling over on 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 buildings, mm -hmm. and that's the start of uh, a huge argument again. They're like, hey, this is too dark, blah blah blah, whatever, and you, we can't see the shadow, we can't see the we can't see the the you know those kinds of things. So it's much it's much better to have your son at the back. What, always okay. think about it. So it's yeah, to not like say ah, I took a bad photo. Do it again, but with the sun at your back. Good. Any other question? Anybody else? Anybody else? Anybody question? No, it seems they're all satisfied, Mr. Frank. I think I so. No question. It's no technical. Photography is so technical. Next time we'll talk more technicalities. I think you should put like an assignment. Yes. Yes, <laughs> yes. yes. Okay, but it, it was very useful, Frank. Uh, really. So yeah, let's, I have to let's talk. I have to talk. I have to talk the way architects talk. Like uh, architects are technical, and the great photography is technical too. But it, it would be difficult for them to 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 like discuss now. What's what's are these numbers? You know, they can't understand. It. <laughs> How does it correspond to what? And sometimes it will be a huge argument, especially over Zoom. So let's rather do. A, you know, I have I have a card like a cheat sheet. So let's like say if you want to photograph this, you want to photograph that. That's that's how you do it. How about if we get like a bus, tourist bus, and you can explain there, and at the same time, oh, that would be tour, great. We can take photos. Yes. Why not? You like that? Yeah, I okay. love the idea. They can. What's the route of Doha bus? I don't know um, the route, but you know. We can do that. Uh, there is one That's going a great idea. from uh, there is one going from Qatar from Qatar to Sugwagif. I think uh, uh, Slam used it before. You came with us, right? Yeah. yeah. So it's like a tour from Qatar to Sugwagif and back. Yeah, but uh, what times? Because uh, we need at least a little bit more light and not like you know go at five p.m. and you know so you, don't, you have no idea. When do you, when do you want it? When is the good time you want it? So we can ask after, them, see um, when they start working. After uh, after hospitality, Qatar, because I'll be photographing <laughs> there for several oh. customers, which is like, uh, what? Third week of November would be great. Third week of November. Yeah, third week. Oh. Third week. That's like 21st of November. Probably, yes. We can do that. OK. We can like right now, I'm, I'm we, we will sure. put it advertised for it and see who won it. Yeah, that that is great because you're you're in a however like the, the challenge time. would be. Oh, the challenge, yes, the challenge would be like Frank. We're in a moving bus. What will be the combination <laughs> of my aperture and shutter speed and all that stuff? And it it's more challenging, but it's more fun mm -hmm. because you can tour. Oh, that's the building. Click. That's the building. Click. You know. Yeah. Good. And 99% of the photos are unusable. <laughs> we can we can ask the driver to stop and go down, take the photo. Yeah, yeah, back. like like do a, yeah from here to let's say for example two or three spots before uh, Suwakif. You know, we from can this agree to that. in certain we can agree in certain thing. Then we can discuss it with the the tourist sure. agency. Why not? Why not? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good. Okay. So we must know the route Check first. For one. Yes. Good. All right. That's great. Okay, Frank. Thank you awesome. again. Thank you very much. And uh, Thank you. Abdullah. Dalal, uh, Ahmed, Lakshmi Narayana. Whoa, did I say your name right? Samar and uh, Omaima. You're the best. Thank you. Oh, Slim. <laughs> All right, gentlemen and ladies. Have a great evening. Okay. Let's have our Hi, dinner now. Thank you. Bye-bye and see you soon. Bye. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.